Close your eyes and be sensitive to the breath. Know when it's coming in, know when it's going out, all the way in, all the way out. Breathe deep down into the body. Because the breath is a kind of food for the mind, the pleasure that can come from breathing comfortably. It can create a sense of well-being. And the mind is like the body, it needs food. The Buddha says it survives because it gets three kinds of food. There's consciousness of the senses, and then there's contact of the senses, the sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, and ideas that come through. And then finally there are intentions. What we're doing as we meditate is to create a good intention to feed on. But at the same time, we're creating good contact, good things to be conscious of, sense of well-being in the body. And that way you learn how not to go off and feed on food, this junk food that's bad for you. Because a lot of the contacts out there, the sights and sounds especially, they can do a lot of damage to the mind. They look good, they're bright and flashy, they sound nice. But if you keep gobbling them down, gobbling them down, it's like eating nothing but potato chips all day long. After a while, you find that it's bad for your health. So give yourself something better. And this is what you can do. The things outside, you can't control what sight, sound, smell, taste you, you see or hear. You have some control. But for the most part, if you're really hungry, you just go for whatever. So we create good intentions inside. Feed off of our good intentions to make the mind still, to understand the mind, to develop good qualities in the mind. When we do that, it's, it's a noble duty, as the Buddha said, the duty with regard to the path is to develop it. So we create this good food inside. And then we can be a little bit more choosy about what we listen to and look at outside. You listen to the Dharma, it gives its contact at the ears, which gives nourishment to the mind. And then you see and hear a lot of things that are not good for the mind. You say, I don't have to pay attention to those. Just let them come, let them go. And I'm not looking for my happiness there because I've got something better inside. This way the mind becomes strong. What are the strengths of the mind? The strength of the mind is conviction. That what the Buddha taught really is true. Then there's a sense of shame. You think about doing something that would be unskillful. And you realize, if the Buddha saw that, what would he think? And he'd be ashamed to do it. This doesn't mean that you have a low self-esteem. Actually, it's high self-esteem. You want to look good in the Buddha's eyes, good in the eyes of the Ajans. A sense of compunction, this too is strength. Think about doing something, you know the results are going to be bad, and you say, I don't need, I don't need to do that. I'm better off without it. Your ability to say no to your defilements. That's an important strength in the mind. Then there's effort and persistence. And finally, discernment. When you know what kind of food is good for you, what kind of food is bad for you. And you know how to create good food for yourself. And that way you can be independent. If you're dependent on other people for your food all the time, your well-being rises and falls with their goodness. That's not a position of strength, that's a position of weakness. So as you feed the mind well, you develop these strengths, conviction, a sense of shame, a sense of compunction, persistence and discernment, and you go through life strong. When you're strong, you're independent. Your goodness doesn't have to depend on the world outside. As you look at the world, all kinds of crazy things are happening, and who knows what's going to happen in the future. But you want to make sure that your strength is independent of all that stuff outside. That way you can trust yourself that whatever happens to the world, you at least will have good karma. And you will have created a good world around you. So you leave behind good as you leave this world and you go on to good things as you go to the next world. And you live at peace in this world while you're here. It's all good when you learn how to keep the mind strong by feeding the mind well. So think of the Buddha as your dietitian. 
He knows what's good for you. He knows what will be for your long-term welfare and happiness.